welcome back to High Desert Growing. I'm Jay Bell. I just wanted to have a little talk with you today about hummingbirds and three reasons that you should have them in your garden. Uh, there are three reasons that I keep them in my garden or that I encourage them into my garden. Number one is that they don't just eat nectar. They also eat, they also prey upon insects. So they help keep insect populations down. So if you're like some of my kiddos who have allergic reactions to mosquito bites, they're gonna be one of your best friends in your garden. They're really good for helping to keep those populations down. Number two, um, pollination. You, you need to have pollinators in your garden. Number three, they're pretty. Why wouldn't you want hummingbirds in your garden? If you can manage it, they're a fantastic resource and they're an excellent pest control and they're just, they're good for your environment. The more animals you can have in your space, the better your ecosystem in your garden is going to be. Now I want to talk to you guys real quickly about um, my hummingbird system that I use. Uh, I've been through a lot of hummingbird feeders over the years and in our sun they just get beat up. They get destroyed, they leak, um, you know, and then as soon as they start leaking it's sugar water so the ants find it and then you have ants everywhere. The best hummingbird feeders I have ever found are best one hummingbird feeders. And the reasons are, um, they don't leak. Number two, they have a flat bottom, so you can actually set them down on a surface when you're actually trying to, you know, fill them up. That is like one of my number one complaints is that they have these fancy schmancy spoopy, uh, you know, jars that don't sit or anything. How are you supposed to fill it up? And then the last thing is, this part, you know, it's impossible to open some of them and clean them, and that is terrible hygiene for the hummingbirds. Um, if you don't clean them often enough, they can wind up with a really terrible infection that they get from um, the tainted hummingbird food and dead. You know, you've killed your hummingbirds by accident. So this is extra important to me to be able to fully access all of the interiors and clean. Now, I'm lazy. I don't wash mine by hand. I stick these in the dishwasher partly because I want it to get to the high temps required to kill any bacteria that are in this. I do keep a wooden stick on hand to help scrape them out because sometimes, it, you know, if I forget for a couple days, I'm lazy. Um, there's some black mold, I can scrape it off, clean it, and make sure that it goes into the wash without any of that tainting it. The last thing is, and this is my favorite part, is you can buy parts. So if you see this, this is the original colors. This is the new color, thanks to our sun. Um, and this is getting brittle. This is the other one that I have. Um, you can see it's broken off. It's gonna start falling apart here probably this year. I will wind up replacing the plastic part and I don't have to throw away the whole thing. I can keep this and just get a new base. Uh, and then also they don't leak. They, they never leak on me. I never have a problem. I do put a little water catch above it so that I don't wind up with ants just in case. Uh, but they're fantastic. You can find these online. You can find them at the Albuquerque Garden Center. They're not crazy expensive. They're not pretty, but they really get the job done. And I'm all for efficiency and, um, you know, not costing a fortune. And as an added tip, here's a really cool thing. I learned this from a bartender friend of mine. I'm sure a lot of you know this trick. I never had a reason to know this trick. I kind of feel silly. It just really makes me happy. So the best way to empty a bottle with a really narrow neck is to swirl it. You just, you know, you, you just give it a swirl, make it like a little whirlpool, and then it just pff, drains like that without any of that gurgling mess. Uh, it's, it's cleaner, it's faster, and uh, it just makes me feel cool, so. Now when you're mixing your hummingbird food, it's really simple, it's two ingredients. It is four parts of water to one part of sugar. So basically four cups of water to one cup of sugar or uh, two cups of water to half a cup of sugar. You know, you choose, you figure out what your proportions are, proportions are based on what you have available size-wise to put outside. Uh, you can put it in the fridge for I think like up to a week uh, but I don't, you know, my, my birds usually, you eat most of it or, you know, I just, it's time to make new stuff by the time that has been eaten. So um, the other thing is, and I'm sure that most of you know this by now, it's old news, but I do occasionally still see it. Please do not put red food dye in your hummingbird uh, feeders. It's not necessary to attract them. They will find it. 
and it's actually detrimental to their health to have that extra ingredient. So, it, you know, it might make you happy, but it's not good for the birds. Uh, and that's it. That's just wanted to give you guys a little heads up about our hummingbird friends. It's tis the season. They are all outside uh, looking for a place to, to eat and well, happy birding to you. I'll see you next time.